This is a demonstration of macros in Microsoft Word. I want to show you the things that are important in recording macros, especially in light of the upcoming Word test. A macro is simply a recording of a set of keystrokes and or mouse clicks. In Microsoft Word, open the Names List document. Let's assume that we have a task ahead of us where we're given a list of names that are given first name, space, last name, and we want to put each one of them last name first, comma, space, first name. Now, there are many ways we could do this without using macros, but I want to demonstrate macros so that you know how they work, and then we'll show you a much more powerful thing with macros where there is no easier way to do it. One of the things to do first of all is to make sure you have the developer tab visible on your ribbon. If we go to file options under customize ribbon on the right hand side we can choose which tabs are available. If your developer tab is not checked go ahead and check that and then click OK and the developer tab should show up. If we click on the Developer tab, notice that on the left-hand side there is a button that says Record a Macro that will start or stop a recording. Before we record a macro, however, it's good to rehearse the steps that we want the computer to memorize for us. In this instance, I'm going to use keyboard shortcuts to do things that we've talked about in our handouts. For instance, if I control arrow to the right, it moves one word to the right. If I hold down the shift key while I do that, it selects a word to the right. So what I want to do first of all is make sure I'm at the beginning of a line, pressing the home key, and now I'm going to skip the first name, control arrow right, then I'm going to hold down control and shift and press arrow right, it highlights the last name. Now I'm going to cut that using keystrokes, control X for cut. I want to get to the beginning of this line, so I'm going to press the home key. Then I want to paste the last name that I've just cut to the clipboard, control V for paste, and notice Word puts a space after it because it likes to keep space between words. I'm going to arrow left one time, type a comma, and that's all I want to do with that name but I want to get my insertion point into position for the next macro to start. So I'm going to press arrow down once and then I want to get to the beginning of the line so I'm going to press the home key. I think that'll do it. So let's record a macro. When I click on record macro notice it says what would you like to name the macro. I'm gonna call this macro last name first. A macro name cannot have spaces in it, but you can put underscores and some other things in it. Last name first. Notice now I have the option to make a keyboard shortcut that will run this macro or make a button on the toolbar that will run this macro, but I'm going to save that for later. This next thing is very important. Where do we want to store the macro? If I store it in the normal template which affects all documents, then as long as I'm on this computer, I can use this macro in any new document that I open. However, if I want to take this macro with me with this document, I would want to store it in this particular document, and that's what I want to do. That is what you will want to do so that when you turn in your test, I will be able to see your macro. We can put a description in here. We don't have to. This is a macro. And when I click OK, notice up here where I had clicked Record Macro, now my choices are to stop recording or to pause the recording. I'm not going to do either one of those. Notice when we move into the Word document that the end of the mouse pointer has an object on the end of it. Some of you might recognize that as an audio cassette which tells you how long it's been since Microsoft Word has done much with their macro recorder. But it indicates that we are recording, so every key that we touch, every mouse click that we make is going to be recorded.
I'm going to repeat the steps I did before. Skip the first name, control arrow right. Select the second name, control shift arrow right. Cut the last name to the clipboard, control X. Move to the beginning of the line, home, paste, control V. Go back one space, arrow left, type a comma, arrow down, and press the home key and we have completed that macro. Now we stop the recording of the macro and let's see how we would run it. If we click on the macros button it shows us a list of all the macros that are available to us in all active templates and documents or in the Word global template or just in this document. In this case it looks like they may be one and the same depending on whether you have other macros recorded on that machine. Now I select the macro I want to run which is the only one there and when I click the run button watch what happens to this third name. I'm gonna click run and it ran our macro. I'm gonna do it again to do the next name macros run but that is going to be a really arduous process if I have thousands of names to do I'm gonna to have to click twice for every name so we can add a tool button to our quick access toolbar that will run this macro in order to do that if we go to the quick access toolbar and click the drop down arrow to the right of it to customize it choose more commands and notice in the category from which to choose commands we can choose the fourth choice macros and it gives us a list of all macros that are available to us well this is the only one there is and I want to add it to the commands on the quick access toolbar so I select what I want from the left click the add button it adds it to the right and now if I OK out of this notice on my quick access toolbar it has put a new button and when I float my mouse on it it tells me the name of that button is project.newmacros.lastname first. If I click that button, watch what happens down here with the next first and last name. Here we go. And again. And once more. Now, let's look at the code. If we click again on macros and select the macro we want to look at, instead of clicking the run button, if we click the edit button, it will open the code that Microsoft Word wrote to tell itself how to do the things we asked it to do. Now you can ignore the rest of this window and let's just look at the code for a moment. Even if you don't know anything about this code, we can figure a little bit out. We can say this somehow does something about moving to the right count one unit word hmm what was the first thing we did the first thing we did was hold down the control key and arrow right that moved it right how far a word how many words one word and then the second thing we did was we moved right again the exact same command move right for one word but it added this thing we may not know what that means but we know we held down the shift key and it selected that and then we cut it to the clipboard. Now right here is something that we could certainly change if we wanted to type something other than the comma let's say we wanted to put a space and a dash and a space now if we go over here and run the macro notice we're getting ready to do this name now it put a space and a hyphen and a space between the names. I'm going to go back to my code window. I could click on macros and edit again. And notice for one thing, things that have an apostrophe in front of them are ignored by the computer when it runs this macro. They are called comments. Normally we use these to document things. We might want to put today's date in here. 
whatever that may be. We may want to type our name as the programmer, but make sure you put an apostrophe in front of it in order to make it a comment that is ignored. Let's say we decided we didn't want to do this particular line of code. We could simply put an apostrophe in front of it and it would become a comment that would be ignored when the code was run. We don't really want that. Now here's another thing that's very important and very useful. We may not know anything about what this code means but we do know one thing about it, don't we? We know that this stuff right here causes the computer to change one of our names the way we wanted it. So, what if we copy and repeat that? Before we do that, let's look at a bunch of names that I've added to this list. I'm going to put this back to a comma. I'm going to go back to my name list and I'm going to do what I did before and see if anything's different. Control arrow right skips the first name. Control shift arrow right selects the last name. Control X cuts the name. Home moves us to the beginning of the line. Control V pastes the first name but notice there is no space after it like there was before. So right after the paste, I am going to put a space in here so that it will be the same as it used to be as far as the macro is concerned. And then I would arrow left and type a comma. Then I would go down and home and be ready for the next thing. So let's go look at the code and see where we put that space in. It was right after the paste. I think I will simply not move to the left one character. I'm going to comment that out with an apostrophe and when I move down it will ignore that move to the left after we paste. So instead of doing just a comma between the names I want to do a comma and a space character. So let's see if this works. I'm going to go back to my names list. I'm going to click my macro button and that seems to be working. Now let's clean this up just a little bit. I don't like that long thing that has all that project and new macros. So if I go back to customizing the quick access toolbar, I can click on that particular item on the toolbar. I can modify it. I can change the name and I'm just going to call it last name first. This is very much like a caption in Access. I can put spaces here even though I can't put spaces in the macros literal name. And then I can also choose a different button. So I think I'm going to choose a more fun button, perhaps the smiley face. And when I click OK, notice it now has a smiley face. It is called last name first. And when I click OK, the tool button has changed to reflect that. Now, a couple of other modifications that we can make. Clicking this button is going to take a long time if I've got thousands of names. So I'm going to go back to my code and notice we know that this chunk of code, even if we don't understand anything about it, we know that that does one line. It does one of our names. Well, what if we copied that chunk of code? And what if we pasted that chunk of code? Now we have that chunk of code twice, so it should do two lines. Let's go over here and try clicking the button. We're getting ready to do number five. It did five and six. Click again. It did seven and eight. Well, I'll bet we could copy and paste this thing ten times or a hundred times. Actually, there are easier ways to do that, and I'll show you that in a later video. But for now, make sure that you can do these things. Record a macro, put a button on the toolbar, run the macro, put some code in it, uh, a comment, and also, very important, we need to be able to save this document with the macro in it. Notice that when we opened it, it was a DOCX, an ordinary word document. 
ordinary Word documents are not macro enabled. You cannot save macros, you cannot save VBA code in a .docx. So when we go to save this file, it's going to give us a message and it says the following cannot be saved in a macro free, a normal Word document. And a VBA project is one of those things. It says to save a file with these features, in other words, to save it with this macro, you better click No and save it as a different file type. If you want to continue saving this as a macro-free document and you click Yes and then you close it, it is saved, but that macro is gone and all your code is gone. So make sure when you save this that you click No. And now we don't want it saved as a normal Word document but we want to choose a Word macro enabled document which is a DOCM extension. Now when we save that file and we can close everything I saved mine on the desktop so when I go back to the desktop notice here is a normal Word document and it has this icon here is my names list .docm, and it has this exclamation point on a script which is for the macro enabled document. When I open this document now it says warning there is a macro in here but since we don't know if you trust the person who sent you this file we've disabled it. If you want to trust that go ahead and click enable content and I do and so I'm going to click on the developer tab I'm going to go to macros I'm going to go to edit and sure enough there's all my code just as I left it